I thought I would do is to give you this in a sort of historical view of how we got to this idea of bacteria acting as these enormous multicellular organisms. And it all started with a crazy bacterium that lives in the ocean that's named Vibrio fisheri. So Vibrio fisheri is a bioluminescent marine bacterium. So it's a bacterium that makes light, like fireflies light, except the light is blue because that travels far in the water. And this bacterium lives as a symbiont, as a commensal bacteria in this organism, which is the Hawaiian bobtail squid. And so what you're looking at is a squid that's been turned on its back. And I hope what you can see are these two glowing lobes. And so these lobes that make up a specialized light organ are under the body or the mantle of the squid, if I turn the squid right side up. And this, these, this light organ is loaded with this marine bacterium Vibrio fisheri. So the bacterium is in there at something like 10 to the 12th cells per mil. We have no idea how the squid grows the bacteria to this high cell number, but they're jam-packed in there. And what they do, the bacteria, is that they make and release a small molecule. This is going to be their chemical word. It's a small molecule that you can think of like a hormone or a pheromone, and we call it an autoinducer. And so what happens is when the bacteria are locked inside this light organ with this squid, they make and release this molecule. And the molecule gets trapped inside the light organ with the squid. So the molecule can't just float away in the ocean. And so the molecule builds up to a certain amount. And so the bacteria can detect it. It tells the bacteria you're inside the squid, not outside in the, in the ocean, because this, this molecule has built up to this critical level. And so when the bacteria detect that that molecule is there, they turn on bioluminescence. And so they make this blue glow. And the reason the bacteria are willing to do that is because this light organ is loaded with amino acids and sugars and all kinds of goodies. It's a much richer, happy, fatter life to live inside of this squid than to have to fend for yourself free living in the ocean. So the evolutionary selection from the bacterium's point of view is that if it provides that light, it gets fed and gets to make more offspring. So that's the reason the bacteria do it. The reason the squid is willing to put up with these shenanigans is because it wants that light. And so the way that this symbiosis works is that this squid, it's only about this big, full grown, it lives just off the coasts of um, California and Hawaii, so in sort of shallow, knee-deep water. And the squid is nocturnal. So during the day, the squid buries itself in the sand and sleeps. But then at night, it has to come out to hunt. And so on bright nights, when there's lots of starlight or moonlight, since the squid is just living in this couple feet of water, that light can penetrate the depth of the water the squid lives in. And so what the squid has developed is a shutter that it can open and close over this light organ, and it has detectors on its back so it can sense how much starlight and moonlight is hitting its back. And then it opens and closes the shutter so the amount of light coming out of the bottom, which is made by the bacteria, exactly matches how much light hits the squid's back. So the squid doesn't make a shadow. So it actually uses the light from the bacteria to counter illuminate itself in an anti-predation device that allows it to escape from predators that would see its shadow, you know, calculate its trajectory and eat it, right? So this is like the stealth bomber of the ocean, right? It makes itself invisible with these bacteria. But then if you think about it, this squid has this terrible problem because it's got this dying 10 to the 12th cells per mil of bacteria in this light organ, and it can't maintain that indefinitely. And so what happens is every morning when the sun comes up, remember the squid is nocturnal, the squid buries itself in the sand to sleep, and it's got a pump that's attached to its circadian rhythm. So when the sun comes up, the squid pumps out 95% of the bacteria. It sort of looks like toothpaste coming out of the sides of the squid. And so now these bacteria are dilute, and so that little hormone, that molecule is gone, and so the bacteria aren't making light. But of course, the squid doesn't care because it's asleep in the sand. And then as the day goes by, the bacteria double, the molecule builds up. At night, it hits the right amount that it tells the bacteria to turn on the light exactly when the squid needs it, when it's going to come out to hunt. And so this is how this is kept fresh. And each of these partners does the right thing at the right time for the lifetime of the squid. And so this, even though the light is very beautiful, what was amazing about this phenomenon was that, in fact, we could see that the bacteria only made light when they were at high cell number. And so we could start to figure out how is it that a bacterium can distinguish times when it's alone from times when it's in a community. And so here's what I've just told you. This is what we figured out. So if this is supposed to be, now this is my cartoon of a bacterial cell, at low cell density, right, the bacteria are alone. They should be doing the program of gene expression that's good for individuals. 
So that's what they're doing. But they're making and releasing these molecules, which I have as these red triangles on this slide. And the molecules just float away. So in the case of Vibrio fischeri, it doesn't make light because the molecule's gone. It, the bacterium understands, if you will, that it's alone. But then, as the bacteria grow and double and grow and double, since everybody is participating in making and releasing that molecule, the local level of the molecule increases in proportion to cell number. And when the molecule hits a critical amount, that tells the bacteria something precise about cell number. It says, you have a community, so the bacteria detect that molecule, and all of them turn on light in unison. Right? So, that's, so this is how it works. Um, and why they all turn on light only at high cell number. They're measuring the level of that chemical and using it as a proxy for population. And so then we brought the tools to molecular biology this, to, to this problem to figure out how this actually works on molecular terms. And what we and a lot of other people in the field realize, so this will be what my cell looks like for the rest of the talk, is that the bacteria have a protein, an enzyme, whose job is to make that signal molecule, that little hormone that I use the red triangles for the cartoon. And that molecule freely diffuses in and out of the cells. So the more cells there are, the more of that molecule there is on the outside. And then what the bacteria also have is they have a receptor. It's like an antenna it's, it, that sits on the surface of the bacterial cells. These are just like the receptors on the cells in your body. And so what happens is when the molecule hits a particular amount, it can fit into this receptor like a lock and key. It fits in there, and information comes into the cell that says there's lots of other cells around. And what happens is the bacteria, when this molecule slots in there, the bacteria turn on the genes that make the enzyme that make bioluminescence or light. So it's a really simple circuit. The more cells there are, the more of this molecule there is. At a particular cell number, that information gets recognized and the bacteria all turn on light together. And why this is interesting is because in the last decade, we have found hundreds and hundreds of species of bacteria that all have a conserved protein that makes a signal molecule, a partner receptor protein, and when these molecules build up in the environment, what the bacteria do is turn on all kinds of genes that specify all kinds of behaviors the bacteria want to carry out when they're in a community, but not when they're alone. And so now we have a fancy name for this. We call it quorum sensing. The bacteria vote with these chemical votes. The vote gets counted, and then everybody responds to the vote. And what we understand understand now is that typically in any one species of bacteria, there can be 50 or 100 different genes, you know, 50 or 100 different behaviors that are controlled by quorum sensing. So this is development. It's a big deal for a bacterium to switch from going it alone to acting as part of a community. And so these little circuits regulate a huge variety of behaviors in every species of bacteria. And so now what we're understanding is that this is not some just ridiculous anomaly of this bioluminescent marine bacterium. This is the norm in bacteri the bacterial world. Bacteria have to be able to distinguish these two situations. And the way they do it is by talking, if you will, with these chemical languages. So that's how they do it. We also took uh, a chemical approach to ask, what are these words, meaning what are these molecules? So on my last slide, these were these red triangles. And so the first molecule that was identified, its structure is the one from this bioluminescent bacterium, Vibrio fischeri. And so in my cartoons, it's the red triangle. But of course, these are three-dimensional molecules. And so this is the word that Vibrio fischeri talks to its siblings with. And when we went on and, uh, to start um, figuring out what all these other bacteria were using as their molecules. This is what we came up with. This is just a small, like a selection of some of the molecules we know. And um, I promise not to give you a chemistry test at the end of this talk, but, but what's real obvious from this slide, right? These are just different species of bacteria. And this is the word that each one of them uses the molecule it uses as a word. And I hope what you can see is that the left-hand part of the molecules are identical. But these right-hand parts, these are just carbons, is a little bit different in every single species of bacteria, right?